Hi, this is Davis. Let's take a look at Builder, reviewing the past quarter. Please like and subscribe. This is a new stock for us, so first I want to share my findings when I compare Builder to other companies in its industrial sector. The main item I want to point out is the P-E ratio in the column furthest to the right. The average P-E ratio of our 10 company sample, including Builder, is 17, and Builder's P-E ratio is 8. I view this as a strength and highlighted it in pink. Any items highlighted in pink signal a strength. Also, when looking at column OP% percent MKT cap, net income, notice Builder has 17% when the sample average is 9%. Another important strength. When reviewing the analyst's projections for the company, I want to point out the current revenue projections for 2023 at -23%, then in 2024 it grows 5% after the big pullback, highlighted yellow in the middle of the slide. While it is not good to see a pullback in its revenue, the company remains extremely profitable, for the previous slide, and its earnings per share highlighted in yellow at the bottom for previous performance and at the top to show the estimates looking ahead. Also, these figures have not changed as of today. Looking at the weekly technical chart, Builder appears to be on a downtrend starting in August 2023. It is pulling back into a former uptrend outlined in purple. This purple uptrend is noted as starting in April 2020. The price point I'm most interested in is $116. I marked light support at that price and as the stock nears that price, we'll see if it finds support there again. I'm marking this a buy at this time, see full details at the bottom. Now, getting into the Q2 financial statements, specifically its income statement. The items highlighted in yellow and green are items with a noticeable change compared to the prior period. The top item I noticed, highlighted in green, shows the company maintaining a relatively flat selling, general, and administrative expense while its net sales have pulled back by nearly a third. This item is then carried throughout the remainder of the statement thus showing a significant decline in its net income return percentage. The silver lining found is the gross margin percent improved slightly. This slide shows more insight to the revenue and its proportions. At the top a percentage breakdown of income statement, followed by a breakdown in revenue allocation showing the big decline in revenue being its lumber type sales being cut by more than half when compared to the same period last year. The company cites the slowing economy for this decline. Next, the balance sheet looks okay. Its current ratio is positive. The top items where I noticed a change include its property going up $100 million, its long-term debt going up $700 million, and its additional paid in capital account going down $600 million. All items with a significant change is highlighted in yellow. Next, its statement of cash flows shows many changes compared to the same period last year. All highlighted in yellow. A few changes worth mentioning include the starting point, net income, being cut in half. In operating activities were relatively flat in total, but with a different allocation of funds. The big shifts were less spending towards inventory. Also, less money credited. These points make sense, given its lower sales. Its investing activities were relatively flat, but reallocated towards spending on property. Lastly, the financing activities were relatively flat as a whole, but at big changes in allocations worth billions. Overall, it appears that it borrowed less money using credit and repaid less on its debts in the past six months compared to prior year's first six months. Also, it continues to buy lots of its own stock back off the market. Here we can see where it spent nearly $90 million in acquiring Noltex and its affiliates. Noting nearly half the purchase is towards goodwill. Otherwise adding more assets than liabilities by about 4 to 1. Wrapping up the quarter 2 results, we can see the company's outlook. It points out an expected decline in housing starts by 9%. Also, pointing to commodity deflation by 16%. The counterpoint being its long-term outlook for housing is positive and believe that the housing industry is underbuilt. In terms of figures, it's expecting year-end revenue between $17 and $18 billion with gross profit margin between 33 and 35%. Also noting that these projections are based on some assumptions including declines in house starts, its acquisitions adding to its overall revenue, capital expenditures ranging between 400 and 450 million, average commodity prices between 400 and 450 MBF, and a tax rate between 23 and 25%. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.